Corona virus has transformed the world around us. Hashtag students against COVID is our response. It started with a tweet in March 2020 by a medical student from the University of Michigan. She sent a tweet asking how students were helping with the COVID-19 pandemic and to use the hashtag students against COVID when responding. Suddenly, she began hearing from people in countries like Pakistan, Italy, Brazil and Greece. Over the next week, she heard from people all around the world. Within days, hashtag students against COVID transformed from a hashtag into a way for students and young professionals to share their incredible ideas and initiatives with one another. Students were inspired and excited as they started talking to another and learning how to virtually volunteer or create hand sanitizer in their bedrooms or even leave PPE drives in their local communities. An important conversation began taking place and it was clear there was a desire and need for a platform for students and young professionals to connect and collaborate. If done right, there was potential to take an initiative by one person to another city, community or country. Within a month, hashtag students against COVID or SAC had become a movement. Today, SAC has more than 500 volunteers from across 65 countries dedicated towards a common mission. These members came from various professional backgrounds ranging from nursing students to engineers to lawyers to medical students to computer scientists to physicians to researchers and to many more. Vision and Mission of SAC SAC's mission consists of seven points. First is spread credible information about COVID-19. Second, empower student voices and initiatives. Third, facilitate innovation and collaboration. Fourth, campaigning scientific principles. Fifth, supporting our communities and healthcare workers. Sixth, fostering inclusion and creativity. Seventh, promoting social accountability. Vision. SAC wants to champion science and enable others worldwide to be in better positions to be leaders of positive change in their community. We value students and allies' voices and we want to enable a culture that empowers their ability to make an impact across the globe long after this pandemic. But why was SAC needed in the first place? Let's look back at the past few months at the impact of COVID-19. Ever since the pandemic took place, rumors and misinformation have been circulated through online platforms related to the coronavirus, which have endangered public health and have caused serious repercussions, such as promoting a false sense of security and creating suspicion against the official guidelines and resources. Public health actions such as closure of educational institutions, restricted traveling, people being compelled to stay and operate from home, and social distancing was put into practice. These practices can make people feel isolated, lonely, also becoming a reason for increased stress and anxiety. The pandemic has put the lives of most essential workers in jeopardy as low-wage workers are more likely to face dangerous working conditions with no prior training on how to prevent COVID-19 transmission, lack of personal protection equipment and no regular hand washing opportunities. But there's hope and we have a solution. Here is what SAC is all about. Some of our teams include a general and clinical research team, financial awareness team, and a women's health team. Some of our recent initiatives include Model United Nations, an e-learning initiative, and a clinical resource bank. In the past months, we've been working hard to spread credible information 
creating flyers in over 40 different languages. On COVID-19, myths and facts, for example, on important topics such as vaccine development, talking about second waves, been building up a resource bank as well, such as the COVID-19 Clinical Resource Bank. I partnered with Students Against COVID at the time, and together we put together this clinical resource database. It's available for free from the Students Against COVID website. It's useful for clinicians and patients alike and has um, information on a multitude of topics. I've been creating safe spaces for people to talk about different concerns such as mental health or women's health. They can do this all anonymously. We further have multiple hotline compilations for hotlines across the world for different mental health crises or to find help in situations of domestic violence. We've been working hard to share our voices and elevate each other across the world as well. Our publications span multiple different countries from multiple different outlets such as UNICEF. Juggling life as a master's student and medical student, she founded Students Against COVID, an international grassroots movement that's brought individuals and perspectives together from all over the world to address the coronavirus pandemic in new, innovative ways. We've worked hard to increase awareness about many different topics that are affecting us, especially topics that have been exacerbated due to COVID-19. Some of these problems are important topics such as the financial impact of COVID-19 on many economies and families worldwide, on the exacerbation of climate change due to COVID-19, on blood shortages. We've striven hard to ensure that our content is accessible to many different communities. Our translation team is run by an undergraduate student and helps curate content in over 40 different languages with multiple different mechanisms to ensure that translations are accurate. We further strive to showcase expert voices on important topics such as mindfulness and coping during COVID-19. Our women's health team was even able to create a self-defense workshop given all the domestic violence cases that have dramatically risen across the world during this pandemic. We further strive very hard to focus on well-being for all our members, whether it be in regards to finances, cultivating empathy and improving peer relations, in regards to fitness or our own wellness. We want to advocate for vulnerable communities as well, whether it be children, new mothers, victims of worsening ongoing crises, or refugees. We strongly believe in the value of making change within our own communities. Many of our members have organized PPE collection drives in the United States and many other places across the world. They've helped create thank you letter send-offs to their local healthcare workers or distributed food. We work hard to empower youth and learners as well. We want to help them become tomorrow's leaders and the best. We have peer learning seminars. We talk about volunteering opportunities. We create outlets for people to publish their pieces or do quizzes on important topics. We further recognize and honor the work our members create too. Welcome to our SAC family. When one part of the team sleeps, the other half wakes up so someone is always working. SAG family includes 19 teams and sub-teams each strive to support and help students learn more about COVID and how to cope with it while at the same time making a positive impact in response to the pandemic. Several projects have been made since the beginning of SAG. For example, Safe Hands video produced by the video team in response to the Safe Hand Challenge made by the WHO. Mother's Day video made by the Women's Health team which is responsible for gender equality and rights of women advocacy. Another thing which is a blog post submitted on the UNICEF Voices of Youth website by a member of the translation team that is responsible for increasing the accessibility of accurate COVID-19 related information to communities worldwide in their own primary language. And because it's all about family, SAI gives more attention to its own family's mental health and how this pandemic affected their lives. For example, an anonymous Slack forum has been made to discuss mental health issues within SAG members that showcases how we support and trust each other. SAG family diversity of countries, professional backgrounds and viewpoints is the greatest strength that enables it to address problems in all different countries and communities, such as members discussing Africa's internet connection and how it made virtual learning difficult during this pandemic.
More than 25 collaborations have been made so far with several organizations across the world to help promote and uplift each other during the pandemic and empower others' voices through volunteer networks. For example, University of Michigan Office for Health Equity and Inclusion, which develops mechanisms for inclusion, diversity, and culture sensitivity among faculty, students, and staff at Michigan Medicine. Another example which is European Student Think Tank, which is an international organization that involves young people in the European policy-making process and promotes the values of the European Union and human rights. Thank you for listening to our presentation. Thank you.